Hey there, this is Beth, and this is my Oracle deck collection with um, something I forgot about in the tarot section. Um, this is the Watchers. It's the Watchers. This is just Major Arcana, though. They're limited edition. They're very pretty. They use trees. This is the back. I think mine was number 73, and I think it's 100 counts. So I don't know where she's at. She's on Etsy. I can't remember the name either. Um, really pretty card. She took a while to get them to me. I had to like email her to find out what was going on. But they're nice. Um, I do enjoy them. I find because they don't have the miners that, you know, there are uses for them, but they're not always the ones I use. I do use them for certain things, but I forgot about them. I was going gathering up what I thought was my um, five or six oracle decks, which turned out to be more like I think eleven. <laughs> it's like stories you tell yourself, and I found those. I'm like, well, should I mention them? Should I not mention them? Let me say, well, I'll mention them. Okay, now. On to things that are oracle decks. We're going to start with... What do you think I'm going to start with? What is my favorite oracle deck of all times? Oh, yeah. Proud's very oracle. This deck, you can tell, it's been used a lot. I use this all the time. I use it for clients. And I like that we have this challenger energy and he calls them challengers they're not there like to fuck your life up but they're there to challenge you here's another one you know and they're kind of the demons that we face inside now this alchemist and they're just such luscious yummy cards and for me when i go to fairy this is very much how things look and appear to me even before i had this deck there were things when I got this deck that I went, oh, I've seen that. There, that, I mean, there were things that I'm like, yeah, I've seen that down in journey work. So for me, this in many ways, I think part of the reason why I like it so much is that it does embody how fairy appears to me even before I had this deck, which also could be because I've been a huge fraud fan for ages, even before this deck came out. So, beautiful deck, beautiful, beautiful deck. I mean, it is intensive. It is learning a system. It's not like the enchanted map. I love the oak man. You got that view of them. And you've got that view of them. And I like how he does some of the standing on head kind of stuff. But, Frown's Fairy Oracle. Recommend it a ton. Um... And just so much depth, so much detail. The book is awesome. And there you go. You can see where I have all my little marks for sections. Um, great book, great deck, great, great, great. Really, this is probably maybe my first oracle deck. I think it probably was my first oracle deck. And definitely the first Oracle deck that I just can't stop showing you because I love them so much. First Oracle deck that I used, used, and have used hard over the years. Just, I mean, look himself, look at that. Oh, such power. Death. Death is one of my favorite, favorite cards in this deck. Just look at it. It's so eloquent and soft and quiet. Unknown. The Glockener. Smooth and hairy. You can think of him like a little sales cars. You sales carsman. Schmoozy schmoozy marketer. Trying to get you to buy your own shit. Buy your own bullshit. The journeyman. Know if you're knowing of setting out and honing your skills. Oops. Gotcha. Gotcha. Screwed it up. Meant to do it right, but I screwed it up for you. And just so many energies. 
to work with and it is very different from anything else I have found out there. So if you're looking for a complex system, you're interested in Faye, you re resonate with that kind of energy, <coughs> definitely recommend this deck. Um, Fairy's Oracle is much more of a cohesive whole than our next deck. And this one's a more recent one for me. Heart of Fairy. The back. This one is deals with relationships more so. And I do have a whole video on it and I talk about how kind of the <clears throat> male female it's very dual as far as male female <clears throat> energies I wish there more were more ambiguity in this deck as far as that goes um, very good book it's across the room I'm not gonna get it it's not quite as good as the fairies Oracle one um, Brian and Wendy Froud did this one completely on their own um, the Fairies Oracle book is wrote by Jessica Macbeth, who did a really good job. The guidebook for this is not quite as good. It's still really damn good, though. But great deck. Um, been using it as a daily card pull for my abundance grid and really enjoying how it's interacting with that. And you get some of his more, like, here's Dark Crystal. Definitely influences on some of the cards as, isn't that just gorgeous? Look at that challenge. Oh, yummy card. And the cards are gorgeous. I, it's Froud. It's Brian Froud. He's like, I don't think anyone does fairies as good as he does in the way he does. I mean, it's hard to say. It's so hard to like make comparisons because everyone has difference. Differences in styles and stuff like that. The hidden one. Um, I said, no, look at that little face mask. I like that one. Let's see here. Here's another dark crystal. Oh, wait, I think that's on a grid. Never mind. Um, here's one. And then you get kind of that weird Labyrinth, Jareth thing. You know, David Bowie in spandex pants. But David Bowie had much better hair. So that that's that one. Um, I would buy this if you're only going to buy one or can afford to buy one or... For me, I would start with the Fairy's Oracle. I do know people who've started with this one, and that's fine. If this one calls to you more than the Fairy's Oracle, go for the one that calls for you. If you're unsure, I would definitely go for Fairy Oracle first, and then if you groove on that one, pick up the Heart of Fairy. Um, some people kind of didn't, had some, were annoyed because it includes kind of the labyrinth style characters and like the hero and the ma I think it's the magician and some of the dark crystal stuff that's similar in that artwork and they're like it's all movie stuff and so I put off buying Heart of Fairy because of those reviews for a long time then I finally just said screw it and bought a used deck and have not regretted buying <clears throat> the used deck so you buying the deck so Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. let's see here. Who do we want to do next? Who do we want to do next? I'm going to do you next. This is probably, I can't remember if I got Fairy's Oracle or what the hell is this called? Druid Animal Oracle? I think it's a Druid Animal Oracle. It's still in print. Here's the back. There was a plant one too that obviously people are lame and did not buy which is out of print now in like five billion dollars so I thought, oh my god there's a there's a plant one because this one has i don't remember how many cards not that many and i find it's very hard for me after a certain point i mean if it's not if you're doing a big spread and you only have like 20 something cards and there's 13 cards that's half 
over half your deck. So I tend to like decks that have more in them. And this one doesn't really have enough that I don't like doing readings with it. I love the imagery. It's it's beautiful artwork. And I really like to uh, Ren. Ren is like my favorite. And there's that whole bizarre hunting of the Ren thing in England. It's weird. B. Look at that B. I these are so gorgeous. I bought this used from Sam Weller's. Um, I don't think anyone had used it. It comes with a nice book. The book is excellent. And kind of a, I think it was polyester cloth that I have I discarded long ago. Um, hair. Hair is one of my favorites. Astara, which leads for them. Very appropriate for this time of year. What I do like to use this for is when I do readings for clients, I like to pull a guidance card. And I'll often use this deck for guidance card. One of my favorite ways to do it. And the artwork in this is just so beautiful. I love the colors. And there's the kitty cat. Raven. The book is very excellent and includes little folk tales along with the description of the card which I find helps very much with a deeper knowing and understanding of this in a Celtic parameter. Snake adder. Fox. And some of the things I do like with uh, this, there are several animals that I do work with that are in this deck. Along with you get the whole elemental dragons which are very cool. But gorgeous gorgeous deck. My cat was meowing because she, she has to open the door on her own. Oh, her little kitty. Gorgeous colors. Gorgeous artwork. Um, I really wish the plant one was like still in print because I would combine them together and use them as one. But it's not and I choose not to pay $200 for a deck, no matter how gorgeous it is. But Druid Animal Oracle, I think it is. Um, I love the seal. The seal is very pretty. Yes. Maybe. Say hi to people, Wilhelmina. Hello. It's Wilhelmina. It's my little string bean cat. She's so skinny and wiry. This little this time I weighed her, she was like eight and a half pounds. I know. I hope you're more like nine now. She's too skinny still. Oh, who next? Who next? Earth Magic. Um, standard commercial deck. I don't use the book with this. Once I stopped using the book with Earth Magic, I got, I connected with it so much better. So. I don't use his book. Um, I do have it somewhere. It is kind of a smaller book, but there's a lot of information on it. It's very good. I do suggest reading it. Eh, or not. I enjoy this deck. Um, it's one of my favorites for card pulls. It's, it's just a good all-round deck. Um, it's a variety of artists, so the art is a little, sometimes not congruent. There's a few that kind of stand out glaringly, and I'm okay with that. Just because, look at that, it's so pretty. Like, this is not my favorite fairy card. Not my favorite. Stone people now. Oh, look at that. Pretty, pretty. So you do have a variety of art styles, because every card is done by a different artist. I like how like you have things like the iceberg, which is submerged, and it's talking about what isn't seen as opposed to what is seen. So it's just, it's a good solid deck. Um, this is one of my favorites. I think that's so pretty. It's on the um, fewer card size 
side of life for me. Effortless. I love that one. Just flow along. That reads well, works well with others. It's just a good solid deck. Um, I would recommend it, but you know, it's like everything I have, I use. There's like a few things that I don't use as much, such as the Animal Druid is one. But I just use that in a different way. I did, um, one year I did a lot of daily draws with it, and that was really cool. Worked well for that. <clears throat> but, yeah, I just, I like it. It was one of the first Oracle card decks I picked up after, like, years of not buying anything such as this. And it's a fun deck. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with it. I mean, and this was kind of the card that that sold me. It's like that emergence. Oh. Very beautiful image. <clears throat> and Spring Equinox, too. Another hair card coming up here. Was another one that really, really just sold me on this deck. I love this one because this, in about, when is it? It's March, April, somewhere around May or June. This is pretty much what it will look like around here. But arrowroot and things like that blooming. But good, good solid deck. Um, if you're new to Oracle decks, this is an easy one to pick up and understand. It's simple and cause it's as simple as you want it to be, and it's also as complex as you want it to be. These are an Angel Oracle card deck that I ordered. I ordered these used. I'm not sure if they're not in print or if they're only available in England or the UK. I don't really work with angels very much. <clears throat> but for whatever reason, I wanted an angel card deck. And a lot of them are like beefy angel beefcake. And it just doesn't appeal to me beefy angel beefcake and so I mean I kept looking I kept looking Kelly Ann Maddox did I care a video on it formerly four queens and it has different backs which I think is there's one I'm not sure how many there are there's another different back which was this one. Okay. there's a different one another different one a little seed of life action going there with sacred geometry in the back. Got that one. I think, I think that's it. I think there's four different backs. But no beefy beefcake angels in this. Um, I definitely enjoy this. This is another one I haven't really done a lot of readings with. I have, however, used it a lot for guide cards. really pretty stuff. They're more abstract for the most part. I like that one. And I really what comes down to is I need to spend a bit more time studying them than I have before I read with them. And they have um, like some angel animal type energy. I need to move these because last time I, there was one time I was doing like an unboxing or whatever, some, something with cards and I set them on my trackpad and turned off my video. But I like how they're semi-abstract at times. Look at that tree one. Isn't that cool? And I like the backs. And there's at least four different backs. And I am very happy I bought these. The book is good. Um, it's very, very new age and angel-y. And I'm okay with that. Um, I just kind of move it into my parameter. And because there is a tendency to the abstract, um, I find with this deck, since there are associations with certain angels, uh, yeah, that's right. 
I just need to spend some more time with it. Um, pretty deck though. Great, great images. It's on the small side. Here's my hand. So it's not quite as big as a regular deck. Here's, here's Heart of Fairy. So, you know, you kind of got, it's, even there you go. So they're a little smaller, and it's kind of nice to have a variety of sizes, I think. I hate when you work a lot, whether you do it professionally or just within your spirituality, having variations in different decks into row or go card decks brings in different sensibilities for you to use and to work with and to grow with. And beefy beefcake angels just are not are not my thing. Okay, who next? Who next? We'll go with you. Oh, don't fall. This is The Journey of Love by Anne Elena Fairchild. Just the back. Um, some people don't like this deck. I really like this deck quite a bit. Um, especially if you're working in the realm of self-love, self-empowerment, self-care. <clears throat> extremely empowering deck I find and it does kind of have a focus on the positive I think a lot of oracle decks do somewhat but even like earth magic has like volcano and lightning in aspects that <clears throat> bring in the darker darker things of life um, a lot of these are abstract paintings or semi-abstract representational the void oh I love that card and see like this one is one that can often like be taken as a negative it's like void there's nothing there it's like dude that's where it all comes from it's like the abyss the void it's where it all starts and then you get these simple Sometimes there's this one, which is very much almost like, oh, what is that called? It's the, is it Chinese or is it Japanese? I can't remember. It's basically a form of art where they use a brush and black ink, and you're supposed to create the pictures with the least amount of strokes possible. And very challenging if you ever try and do that. But... You get those cards and so simple and within the you know lushness of the other cards they really stand out and become something more powerful as it were very feminine um thing it's like i have a friend who was asking about decks for a teenage boy and it's like decks are so freaking girly you start thinking like who what would I recommend to a young adult that's male simplicity see there's another one of those long drawings and I'm like yeah there's a few that I could think of but a lot of them are very girly and this one is very feminine energy again I and I'm finding as I think you've had this huge swing of the non-traditional religion such as is I'm referring to traditional as say what really the people of the book Jews Judaism Islam and Christianity I think we swing so far to the goddess edge of things we're all over here in the divine feminine when <clears throat> There's almost a lack of the sacred male in this kind of manner. And there is some male energy, I mean, because you do have, like, the Christ, but that's the Christ flame. We're not talking, you know, the horn god kind of flame. You know, and it... Because most, I'm trying to think, Christ is a male figure alone, and some of them could be interpreted as whatever alone but 
you know, they're all kind of female -y looking. When I look at the figures in here, I don't say male. And I think we swing so far over to goddess energy, it's time to kind of bring back that sacred masculine in a non Judeo Islamic Christian way of bringing it back in how we want it to be. And bringing that out for men and women to use in their lives. But anyways, back to the journey of love. Okay, you get the gist. Nice deck um, to use it. Very much a deck of self empowerment, self love, bringing in self care, that kind of stuff. Who's next? Let's go for Megan Weber. This is indie one. I have two. Most of my. I like this deck quite a bit. Um, I don't read with it. Um, what I tend to do is put a card on my altar with this um, or pull. I did a jelly draw for myself for a very long time with this deck. There's the back. And I'm pretty sure I did an unboxing of this because I was really super excited. I love her moon I, when I got this because I really like Megan Weaver's artwork. I have her other deck, the Amalus Os Fortuna. So when this came out, I was just like, oh yeah, it's mine. Although I did think I waited just a little bit before I did buy it. Um, okay, this is feeling awkward. I have to. It's easier to go from the top from the bottom. Um, really? Simple artwork, simple. But I say simple is, we tend to think simple is a bad thing, and simple sometimes can be just what you need. Because once you start looking into it and exploring simple, it often gets more complex. But this is definitely one that I enjoy using as a card to bring in energies with on say like an altar or for your day you could also they'd also make really good guide cards i haven't done that with these yet but fun deck um i just like her artwork megan's awesome she's on etsy you should buy something from her if you haven't she also sells prints along with prints of her artwork so if you're not interested in buying a deck you can also but you like her artwork she does sell uh, other things other than decks. So that is, and I don't think I told you what it was. This is the Azuka Bone Oracle deck. And she likes bones. She does a lot of things with bones. Which I kind of like. I like bones. I've been collecting bones since I was a child. So, okay. I'm getting there. Looks like three more decks to go. Mm-hmm. Think we'll that deck did not open. Awesome. Think we'll come in under 40 minutes. Like 29 right now. <clears throat> if we do, we'll beat the tarot decks. I didn't count how many tarot decks I have. This is the Fallen Angels. I love this deck. I put off buying this deck for quite a while. And once I bought it, I was like, what I put by? Put it off. I love this deck. Um, I find they're a little more surly than the angels than these guys. Um, some with good reason. I just like this deck a lot. It, great images, nice digital collage stuff. Um, sometimes the meanings I find extremely, you, is it, this is complex. This deck is a complex entity and sometimes the little key words 
can almost be a little bit almost misleading especially on the dark like danger some of them and then you start to delve into them and Alice Melf is about what's going on they're subtle there are very intelligent interpretations of what's going on and sometimes they kind of have a wry sense of humor that makes you go okay um, I would definitely buy this stuff again or recommend it if someone's looking to work with something like this um, they remind me somewhat of the Fae, which I think is probably why I like them so much. They're definitely not a Fae energy. They work very well with Fairy, though. Um, at least for me, they, they get along very well with each other. Nice artwork. Um, comes with a nice little book. Um, Nigel Suckling did a really good job with this. I'm not sure. This is Nigel Suckling. That's all I remember. I know he wrote the book. I don't know if he did the art. But really, very interesting to work with these and energies. And I find when I really use them for other people, it's almost more of a channeled message. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, be loving and using the vocative. I'm like, the first couple times, I was like, what? What's this vocative? And I realized what was going on. Like, oh, wonderful, beloved human. I'm like, what? So it kind of, kind of, because I don't talk like that when I do readings <laughs> for people. I am not full of, oh, beloved human kind of stuff. But when I do use these, all of a sudden you're like, oh, beloved human. I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Come back here. You fed on the floor. So if you are using this deck and you start oh beloved humaning people, you're not alone. Fun deck, good deck, um, complex. I feel like I've just barely touched the surface of this and it's something that is very in depth and really is a lifetime of exploration with these angels, these fallen angels. <clears throat> you know, and some people call them demons, and you know, I've dealt with shit that's annoying and wants to groom you, or what you know, I've dealt with some of the more negative aspects of energies and entities. And dude, no, do not feel like that. A great many of them really like the humans, and as long as you're not like commanding them to do things, if you're not trying to force them to do what you want them to do for you, they're very obliging. I have a feeling if you like tried to command them and say, do this for me, they'd be kind of like, yeah, I don't think <clears throat> it would be a very pleasant relationship, especially like if some of them were forced to do things they did not want to really do and work with people other fallen angels that they weren't really keen on working on with and yeah <clears throat> this is the enchanted map call it berry i think um i've never read the book for this i kind of did and i don't know it wasn't chiving for me i love the cards i find the cards extremely intuitive and I almost found the book too restricting. Pretty graphics. Here's the back. Um, I use these quite a bit. They're a more recent deck and I use them frequently. They're just fun to read with and fun to look at. I like the kind of whimsical aspect that they have. It's you know, things really just aren't all that real and it's very fantastical and fun to use. It's definitely for me a feel-good deck. Um, it does give very nice readings but 
it feels good to use this deck and that's yeah because look that's very whimsical and fantastical i like that kind of stuff um i mean really i make little bobblehead girls with that would like heads would cush their bodies though when i paint sometimes so yeah so whimsy and fantastical not such a stranger in my life but deck just fun deck And I do think, you know, these kind of things that seem superficial, you know, superficial is only as superficial as you let it be. Any deck that calls to you can be made deep. And frankly, you know, I was, you know, I always talk about fluffy bunny and spirituality. And if you're on the path of the fluffy bunny and that path works for you and you enjoy it, you know what? Go for the fluffy bunny path. Some people, that's where it's at. I'm, who am I to judge? But, yeah, I like this deck. It's, it's a feel, I, for me, it's a feel-good deck. Um, it just feels good to use it. And it feels like it wants to make people feel good and give them messages that are going to make them happy and improve their life. And not, that's not to say that that doesn't go into some of the darker aspects of things like you have Stormfield, but even Stormfield, storms can sometimes just be what you need to wash stuff away. Um, Ghostlands, I think that's a pretty card. That's one of the more shadowy ones, but is that really shadow? I don't know. I can... Goblins. I think goblins are cute. Did I show that one? I think I did. It's just for me, it's a the enchanted map is a feel good deck. Okay, you get in there. Oh, and it has really, really pretty gilded. There you go, you can see the reflection. Gilded edges. Which makes it really super pretty. Oh, I forgot one. Uh oh. Hold on. Is back. I forgot my Oracle of Visions. Or as I called it in one video, Oracle of Seasons. I was just laughing at myself. This is a Chiro Marchetti. Marchetti, I think it's Marchetti. Can't remember Chiro's name. Um, I have his Legacy of Divine Tarot. And I'm looking at his Tarot of Dreams, I think it is. I like his artwork. It's all digital. I don't care. I like the fantastical of it. He's very much into har harlequins and that kind of stuff. Oh, it's like, Jareth! There are no names in this deck, only numbers. Um, which can make it challenging at times for readings. Um, I used to make up names for them. Now I just give people the numbers. Um, along with the description. And tell them there are no names. And let them look at it and to it what they want to call it. I use this one a lot. This is currently on grid. I'm experimenting with a group for metamorphosis using layered sacred geometry and the stack is being used on that one currently. It has a good balance of happy cards and shadowy challenger kind of cards <clears throat> and some that could be construed as both. And he has a tendency to use um, some of his own artwork within his artwork. He also likes ballerinas and kind of things just floating or suspended or in water. Yeah, you know, it's just I enjoy this deck. I enjoy the imagery. I'm extremely happy. I bought this was one of the um cards that sold me on it. And probably this one is not my favorite card. It's illusions with snakes, but snakes are so much more than illusions and and, and skin shedders and I don't know not my favorite card faces which person are you 
lot of deck. I've used it quite often for clients, for me, for whatever card pulls. Although I have used it quite as much for card pulls because it really helps to have a keyword to identify when, because it's just you know rapid fire and you know a few sentences. This is one of my favorite cards. I like that one. Just nice images. Some of them are extremely powerful. He has kind of a Victorian steampunk vibe to him, especially in this deck. Um, this one is nice. Just some very luscious images. And he uses a lot of masculine, which is nice. There's a good balance of male female kind of stuff here. You know, not here's a not just girly girl which I do enjoy. I, can, I almost forgot about this one. I had to go grab it. So pretty much, I think this one's going to be longer than true. Although we are to the last one. We are getting there, people. We have come and made great progress. This is my most recent act. Well, it was a gift. So I didn't actually acquire it. Um, there is a video on it and my first and some of my impressions of and it kind of has a tendency to stick together because there's square edges um that's the back there's one of the fronts and this is the animal kin oracle by sarah wilder yes wilder so, oh, things that, that's just want to stick forget it draft just got this deck barely have used it just a little bit I love the pictures. I what I have used of it so far. I really, really enjoy. Really nice animal deck. Doesn't stick to land sea. Continents. It's global. It has little. I think she's Australian or Kiwi. I can't remember if she's which country she's in. But yeah. You, I don't have any, I've never seen a duck like that, frankly, but, okay. Does it mean it doesn't exist? I just, it's a fun duck. It's a pretty duck. Um, the borders, you see like that one has little circles. Have meaning. See, look, that one's different. So you can look, the borders represent different elemental aspects. Earth, water, fire, air. So you can use that to further add meaning to the animal. Good deck. Really nice deck. And I can see myself using this frequently once I do make it through that really tiny, tiny textbook. My friend who gifted this to me was saying that um, the pen is the creator's power animal, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> animal guide. You just think that little piggy so cute. But yeah, if you're looking for an animal duck, it's a little different. They're all the same. Oh, it's the others, or limited. Or you just don't like the graphics. That's been a large part of my issue. Is that um, that's why I have the Druid one. Because I really love the pictures. But there's been very few other animal oracle decks that have really called to me. Because I haven't liked the graphics. Um, so that's it. We have made it through. To the best of my knowledge. All of my oracle card decks. Yeah so excited did it but pretty much anything I have I would recommend it um I'm not going to keep a deck around that doesn't speak to me or I find I'm not going to use it it's either going to be gifted donated or modified and so everything I do have I do use in one way or another and some get used more than others and certain, sometimes too, you get 
like phases where one speaks more than louder than another deck and so I'll bring it in and I find too with including my cards on crystal grids um, it almost creates a need for more cards sadly enough <laughs> because I have um, I have several decks that are just tied up with those for like about a month unless I choose if I could change it but there's certain energies I want to bring in, and that's why I'm using those decks. Okay. Thank you for watching it. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for getting to the end. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.